Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Beantown vs. Big Apple Sports. I'm your host, Nicola Vassar, along with my co-hosts, Alex Green and Ray Becker. Today, we'll be discussing the Boston Celtics, Brooklyn Nets, and New York Knicks. Starting with the Nets, Reid, how have the Nets been performing this season? So as of this recording, the Nets are where they should be, which is at the top of the Eastern Conference standings. And this is even without Kyrie Irving. The Nets are still having success with James Harden and Kevin Durant leading the way, who have been... Uh, While well, there's still, though, a big question mark around Kyrie Irving and if he will be playing at all this season, uh, this is after because of his hesitancy to get vaccinated. Um, so the Nets did actually take his contract extension away um, because under New York City rules, uh, he is not allowed to play games at the Barclays Center. Now, he was allowed to participate in their practices and on the road, but the Nets did not want that to have a distraction and him to be the play only in road games, really. And um, they really were saying, are you in, are you out, contribute fully or not at all. Um, so the Nets now have been without a sharpshooter as well, uh, Joe Harris, who recently went uh, through some ankle surgery, and he's expected to be out four to eight weeks. However, there is optimism that he could be returning before that timeline. Yeah, for the Nets, I think they've done a good job of just distracting, I mean, leaving out the distraction of Kyrie Irving just playing good basketball. Like you mentioned, James Harden and Kevin Durant, they've really been stepping, stepping up the season and leading the way for them. So it'll be interesting to see if they can continue their success and ultimately get a top seed in the Eastern Conference like they should. And they have all the uh, new uh, roster uh, bench uh, players with Marcus Aldridge and then some as well. And I mean, Kyrie Irving, he's got to get vaccinated. I don't know. You see his Instagram posts that have been going on lately. Something, he's, something's been going on with him. Yes, uh, those bench pieces, I think, are turning, turning out for the Nets as well. They've been pr producing in a big way for them, much like, um, unlike last season, their bench was not that good, so it's nice to see them actually have a good bench for once. Yeah, it's interesting to see how the season's going to progress because, like, I feel bad for Irving, like, he's been struggling. But, so, Reed, how... He's not struggling, he's just, he's just, he's just not, he's not complying with know, human nature right now. So, Reed, going back, going back to... The New York teams. How the how the Knicks been performing this season? What do you think? So, as of this recording, the Knicks are towards the bottom of the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference. And for the Knicks, it's been really just a team effort, as they have six players currently averaging double digit points a game. Uh, this includes Julius Randle, who is currently averaging a double double. The Knicks have been also getting a lot of attention recently, as head coach Tom Thibodeau. Uh, has taken Kemba Walker out of the rotation due to a lack of defense. Uh, there's also been rumors going around that the Knicks are trying to trade Kemba, potentially to the Rockets for John Wall. Although personally to me, I don't see how uh, John Wall would be a good fit for the roster because his contract is massive. He's making uh, around $41 million this season and is under contract until 2023. He also hasn't played consistently since 2018. He was out for all of 2019 and only played in 40 games in 2020 for the Houston Rockets. Yeah, for the Knicks, uh, that Kemba move was shocking. I really didn't see that happening. I thought when the Knicks got Kemba, I thought he would be a good point guard for them. There's some better experience for the younger uh, players there, especially Emmanuel Quickly, who they drafted really recently. Um, I, don't, I don't get John Wall either. I, his contract is too big, and it doesn't seem like the, he would just fit well with the Knicks roster at all. Yeah, and I think if, for the Kemba, though, it was low-risk, high-reward kind of move for the Knicks, and also... You haven't learned by now, uh, people up here might, because they're not in the New York market, but Tom Thibodeau is play defense or get out of here, basically. And that's basically what we do with Kemba Walker right now. Yeah, I agree with Reed. I don't see how John Wall would work well with the Knicks. However, it's just a rumor for now, so we'll see how anything actually, if anything actually happens. Moving on. Alex, how have the Celtics been doing this season? So the Celtics have been underperforming uh, so far. Yeah, this, this is most likely due to their inconsistent play. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have been leading the way for them this season as they both averaging over 20 points a game. Brown, however, has missed eight games earlier this season with a hamstring injury. So the Celtics have been cautious with Brown and they're trying to prevent another injury from happening. So they're being cautious with how, one, how, how much he plays and they're resting him fairly often. Uh, first year head coach Ime Udoka has done a decent job, but it's only his first season. So they'll have to give him time to get acclimated to his new role and just see how he does. So coming over from New York, I uh, from Brooklyn actually, I thought Ime was a great hire, but it's just too early to tell. And hopefully the Celtics can get back to kind of their consistent performances and hopefully raise their standing in the Eastern Conference a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, for, for the Celtics, I mean, quite honestly, I don't, I might have had not as high as expectations from the outside looking at it as you guys might have had, because to me, the Celtics, they're mediocre middle of the pack, but really, the Brooklyn Nets are the team that's going to be in everyone's way. And I don't see how, even if with full strength with Tatum and Brown and Smart, I, it, to me, it just, it, it wasn't going to work. And I think we're seeing, the, the only one thing I'll leave with this is, what I found interesting is, people say Kyrie was the problem with Boston and the Celtics. Well, he's gone now. So who really is the problem? I'll leave that for the Boston media and fans to discuss. Yeah, I've been disappointed with how the Celtics have been playing so far, but hopefully they can turn it around. That's all the time we have for today. This is our last episode of the semester, so be sure to join us in January, and thanks for watching.